Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we're discussing what might have been the coolest chronograph launch of Basel World 2014. Granted, that's some heady company since the Patek 5961A in steel bowed that year, but the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Chronograph Reference 5200 certainly throws its hat into the ring. 43 millimeters in stainless steel. It's slimmer than a conventional time only 5015 50 Fathoms, which is to say 14.8 millimeters. This will fit underneath a jacket cuff. It has strong case lines, but it's not excessively sized. At 49.8 millimeters across the wrist, it cuts under the 50 millimeter threshold that I consider the max for a smaller male wrist of 14 centimeters circumference. So this will hold up well on a big wrist, but it also wears comfortably and proportionally on a small wrist. The spacing between the lugs is a very modern 23 millimeters. So should you wish to accessorize, that would be the strap that you'd buy. However, consider the sailcloth factory strap, bolstered, blue, monotone stitch, folded edge, and wonderfully rubberized on the underside to make it supple, comfortable, and non-chafing. It features a matching Blancpain branded, principally satin finished and nicely faceted stainless steel pin buckle. Also note how the bridge has been raised above the frames, the stanchions, so that the strap actually sinks into the buckle rather than having the buckle stack up and add height on the wrist. Clever design. And it continues in the case, which is simple but strong. There is really no polish to speak of. It's primarily a satin finished watch and several different satin grains are used. There's a horizontal satin on the case band, there's a vertical satin between the lugs, and of course you can see the lugs themselves are faceted and squared off on their ends with a diminishing bevel that moves towards the case band, pretty much disappears until it flares on the other side. The knurling of the bezel is minimalist but effective. It's not quite the sharpest and it will offer some challenge to grip, but you're going to enjoy the click, which is the best Blancpain has ever produced, and I do mean ever, ever. The 50 Fathoms 5015 is creamy and refined. This rivals the best from Doxa and Panerai, which I consider to be the dive watch standards of the industry. Sharp, robust, loud, and chunky. There's a precision to it, too. It feels relentlessly mechanical. And the insert, unlike the standard 5015, is a ceramic bezel, not a sapphire. So it has a flat plane rather than a camber, and it has liquid metal fills so that the metal comprising the calibrations is bonded to the ceramic and will never separate. Ceramic, as well as the sapphire, make the top of this watch an effective shield from scratches. Line up the luminescent pearl with the 70s style, block index hand, and you'll note you have an impromptu zero to 60 minute timer, which is useful because the chronograph has only a 30 minutes elapsed counter. So if you need to time something between 30 minutes and 60 minutes, you may as well just use the dive bezel rather than the chronograph or time two events concurrently. The dial base is an anthracite sunburst with a rich grain, whereas the standard 5015 is a gloss finish. This is metallic and it has an explosive sunburst look and feel that says more Rolex than Blancpain, at least in my mind I associate sunbursts more with Rolex, which is to say this is a very upscale dial. All white gold indices, white gold hands at center. The bathyscaphe always more of a 70s look than the more mid to late 50s aesthetic of the 5015. It has countersunk sub-registers, and you will note they are emphasized with constant seconds minimized, although I love the lollipop style mini sub-seconds hand. There is a date, and I actually appreciate that the date doesn't displace one of the indices. You get just as much gold. Now, activate the chronograph, and you'll notice a very smooth sweep. There's a quick set for the date, there's a hacking or stop seconds function for the watch, and because it is a it is a 5 hertz or 10 beat per second, 36,000 vibration per hour El Primero style escapement. It's a high beat chronograph with a 50 hour power reserve and a flyback functionality as standard. This is the caliber F385. So a rich dial and a movement to match. The whole watch, 300 meters water resistant. Blancpain actually, and I know some guys are going to get on me for my pronunciation, it is Blancpain, I realize. They actually advertise that you can use this watch, and I mean actuate the chronograph underwater down to its maximum 300 meters. I don't advocate that, but the company does claim as much. That's the factory vow, not mine. A PVD blackened and principally media blasted engraved 18 karat gold winding mass. You will note a full balance bridge of unconventional A-frame architecture. See how close I can get. 
and it is a free sprung index, so it has the full balance bridge and the free sprung index for shock resistance, a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. You'll note that the driving wheel, the primary driving wheel of the chronograph, is a nod to the 10-year dalliance between Lamborghini and Blancpain. It is a wheel spoke pattern like you'll see on a Lamborghini Aventador. It is a vertical clutch chronograph system so you can engage it without any jump or stagger and you can simply leave it running. That's the advantage of a vertical clutch over a lateral clutch. There's no additional wear and tear if you like to leave your chronograph running. You'll also note the column wheel, black polished crenellated cap and screw at center. Easy to see, interacting with its levers and horns. There is a sort of macro brushed dressage that radiates out across all of the bridges. It's not Cote de Genève, it's not Perlage. It's a rich texture that's thicker than a sunburst dial, but less coarse than Cote de Genève. It rewards close viewing. All screw heads black polished. You can see there's a good deal of black polished hardware on this movement, and it is a gorgeous movement. The edge of every bridge is rounded and mirror finished, and the timepiece actually shows you more and intrigues more the longer you look at it. You can see additional Aventador-style wheels hiding underneath the stacked bridges of the Caliber F385. Made for Blancpain by its movement manufacturer, Frédéric Piquet, this is as good as modern high horology chronograph calibers get at over 6.6 millimeters thick. It's also thick and tough like a sports watch caliber should be. See this one and make it yours on the watch box. And if the Crown Guard free profile of the Bathyscaph Chrono wasn't enough to win you by day, behold by night. Important to note, this watch adjusted in six positions versus the standard chronometer five. A supremely accurate watch and an easy one to read day or night. See it and make it yours on the watch box.